that's then. This is now. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a massive warm welcome to Glyn Hodges. Glyn, how you doing, man? Yeah, very good. Very good. How you doing? Good, good, good. How are you keeping in lockdown, buddy? Uh, it's been okay. I mean, I'm you know, managing Wimbledon, so about living in the north of England, we'll say north, north nuts. So uh, I was, uh, well, you miss football when it's driving you nuts. It was nice to get home. I've got a granddaughter who's coming up a year uh, a year next week. So uh, it, it was nice to just get home and, and, and see, spend some time with her. But I'm itchy feet now and I'm desperate to, uh, desperate to get back out on the grass. Nice one, nice one. How was it? Um, I suppose something I really did want to ask you actually, like being the manager of a football club and then coronavirus hitting you. What was that like for you? Because you must have had a plan, a dynamic, um, all this momentum going on, and then just like stop. Well, I did. I've done the pre season, uh, end of Feb, early March. So, all my pre season was, was, uh, was up, games were fixed in, everything was done. And then from that, from that moment, once we was, we was due to play uh, Doncaster away. Uh, and from that moment, everything obviously was shelved. So, first of all, you you, you you hear snippets. You don't really get much guidance. A bit disappointed with some of the leadership. But you think, is it going to be a month? Is it going to be six weeks? So initially, we kept the boys going, and uh, we we had to you know we had to be quite clever in how we did it. I mean, everyone's on Zoom and everyone's having these meetings. So we sent out we sent out programs. Got the boys bikes on Strava. Got them all registered, and then we just kept tabs on them. And then we was hearing it's not going to start. It's not going to start. But the position we was in, we were just above relegation uh, spots. We said, well, we, well, we can't take these rumours. We've got to make sure we're fit and ready. So we carried on um, and uh, had dates. And then the dates went and gone. Then another date. And eventually, uh, eventually, you know, they, they, they've, they've, they've obviously uh, crossed the season. And we've survived. And the boys are now having a well-earned rest. And now we're just waiting for um, the start of the season, whatever date that is. I've got three or four dates uh, in mind for that pre-season again. You know, so... Um, they're ringing around. If you speak to the, the teams in the north of England, they think it's going to be the end of end of September. Midlands is going to be the mid September. My, my head was on the fifth of September. So smart money is on the twelfth of September for us to kick off. So again, you know, we're just redoing, rejigging pre season, and, and 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 again, just just obviously we've got to set up the COVID. It's COVID. We've got to set up testing. We've got to set up the protocols that are in place. Um, so there's still a lot to do, uh, and you know, we're, we're rushing to get it done. Because the thing is, as well, you're not prepared for that in any way, shape or form. There's no coaching badge or there's no school that says, right, just in case COVID happens, this is what you have to do to prep. So surely it's like everyone's in the same boat again, almost. Yeah, it is. It's, it's unprecedented. I mean, you know, the, 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 the main thing is obviously the revenue, you know, for, for yeah. you know, League One, League Two, the tap's been turned off. Uh, we're we're fan owned uh, and we're building a stadium. We're moving back to Plough Lane. So, Excellent. Uh, we're, you know, so this, you know, the fans have, you know, we've got a slight loan, but the fans have put their hands in their pockets, and you know, we're we're we actually. So not only are we, we're only is the budget was the budget cut last year because we, we, you know, the money's got to go to building the stadium. Now we've got no revenue at all, so you know, we're scratching around, and I think there's a lot of clubs like that, you know, and there's a lot of clubs that are real, really close to, you know, cl close to that, you know, probably the, the I don't know the. Well, level. Wigan, Wigan went today. Wigan have gone into administration today, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, and they're a massive club, like a beautiful yeah, stadium, yeah. a big, I, big I club. Yeah, I didn't expect. I mean, I've, I've heard League One and League Two. I didn't expect anyone from the Championship. That's come as a surprise. So, yeah. uh, your thoughts are with them, and hopefully, it's not a domino effect. And hopefully, that you know, it's it can be resolved, and whatever whatever they need to do, it's best done, and everyone gets through it unscathed. But I mean, the important thing is we're making sure we sit here this time next year, and, and everyone's got all the clubs are still intact. Whatever league you're in, is you know, is is irrelevant. We've got to make sure that the clubs have been here over hundreds, hundred years. We've got to make sure that you know we're we're the, you know, the stockholders, stakeholders. But we, you know, we need to make sure we're 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 right and we're ready for this time next year. Yeah, and I think you will be. That's one of the good things you can say about Wimbledon because obviously, however many years ago it was when Wimbledon almost folded and became MK Dons, the fans were like, "Nah, not having that. We are we've got a court. We are Wimbledon, and we're building from where we are." So I think if any club could do it. It's AFC Wimbledon, isn't it? Yeah, the fans, the fans are magnificent. You know, right from the start, the dream, the, the, the dream was to get back to Plough Lane. They felt hard done by, uh, and they were. It was, it was horrendous. Yeah. The story uh, moved around from pillar to post. You know, the ground shared, and then, uh, and then the, you know, they, they got moved. Actually, did not go with ground share. They got moved. You know, halfway up the M1 or top, bottom of the M1, as it were, to Milton Keynes. So 
Uh, mm -hmm. That was when the, that was when the nucleus of the fans decided to, to, to start again with AFC Wimbledon, and and the story the story the story's got to be made into a film. You know, and, and it, yeah, it, it was a film. It would be far fetched, and people wouldn't believe it. That's how good this story is. And even <laughs> even funding of the fact, even funding the stadium. You know, we've had crowdfunding. We've had a bond. I don't know if you're aware of this bond that play, the, no. the fans have been buying into this bond. And the money we've raised uh, just through the fans is phenomenal. That we're a great set of fans. That's great. That's proper football. So the question is then, Glenn, if and when they do make the Wimbledon film, who would you want to play you? Oh, I don't know. I've, um, I've, had, a, I've had a lockdown haircut, but before I was looking a bit Ray Winston-like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Someone, someone good-looking, of course. Someone good-looking. Yeah, naturally, naturally. Like you said, it would be far-fetched. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. Sorry, I had to take a dig. Right. I had to take a dig. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, um, we're talking about Wimbledon. Obviously, you played there as well. You started your playing career there. What was it like coming up through the youth ranks at Wimbledon in the early 80s when they were effectively the crazy gang? Like, what was that like as yeah. a young lad training with those boys? That's fantastic. I mean, I mean, the, the story begins when, when I was when I was last year of school. I was, because it was in London, you could do, you could do all the London clubs. And I was at Chelsea. I've been at Chelsea for four years. And then, and then, and then uh, I got an offer to go to Wimbledon, and I could have been, I could have been a scholar or apprentice at Chelsea. Chelsea were in the, the, the old First Division, what is now the Premier League, and yeah. because I enjoyed it so much at Wimbledon, I walked out on Chelsea to sign for Wimbledon. Now I'm now in League Two, the old Division Four, and thinking about it, you think, you know, if, if you if you don't make the grade at Chelsea, you've got you know a little bit of cushion that you can keep going down the leagues, and there's a little bit of cushion you can still probably make a make a play. But if you don't make it at Wimbledon in Division Four, League Two as it is now, you're you know, you're you're sunk about trace or non league. So you when know, I went I, I chose to go there purely because because of the you know the the, the, the the how the club was, how the club felt, you know, the players who I uh, known really well and and more importantly, I was a I was a scholar, first year scholar at sixteen, you was training with the first team. Now, you know, wow. the other clubs you don't get that. So there were six of us trained every day with the first team. So you was fast tracked and a massive fun. It was a massive learning curve. You know, he was getting he was cannon fodder, he was getting beaten up, he was getting kicked, he was getting thrown in rivers, you know, there was all sorts of thrown in stinging, that was all sorts went off. But it was it was absolutely phenomenal. And luckily, you know, touch wood, it worked out for me. And I made my debut a year later uh, as a second year scholar and a second year apprentice. And then, you know, we we progressed, we went right through the leagues. It was it was phenomenal. I like that um that confidence that you have of like I'm just going down to the uh, to the bottom, as it were. And really test yourself and not give yourself a safety net. Is well, it true? Sorry. Go on, go on, say it again. I was gonna say, is it true that you did that throughout your career where you'd only have like one year contracts so that you would yeah. purposely perform to your top level? So you had to so yeah. the boss was kind of forced to give you another contract, yes or no? Yeah, no hundred percent. I mean that, that that one that one looking back, I'd I wish you know you're looking back in hindsight, you think, I wonder what would happen, what if if I'd have stayed there? You know, that was a that was Yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I wouldn't swap my career for anything, you know. But but what well, I, I had belief in my ability. I was a confident boy, and and I, and I always felt that, you know, that that you never, whenever you come through as a young boy, especially at Wimbledon, you never get, you never, you know, they were bringing in players elsewhere on like loads more money, loads more money. Now I'm not driven by yeah. money, but thinking I'm not getting fairly rewarded. So I was ambitious to play in the, in, in the Division One. Always had. So I would sign a one year. They give me a two or three. Said so I only sign a year. Why? I said because Nick, if I have a good season, score a few goals. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll be on the way. So I did that. I did that for quite a few. But every time of my contract ran out, we got promoted. Contract ran out, we got. We had about four promotions in five years. There's a relegation yeah. in right at the start. But you know, I, I didn't expect. I, I, I was always hopeful I'd, I'd be in the top division, playing the top flight. Uh, but I didn't expect it with Wimbledon, especially at that time. But to, to do it with the lads and to do it how we did it. Uh, um, even even when I did get to the first division, when I still only signed a year, I only wanted a year. I'll have another year again in, when we when we got there. So I was always looking, I was always thinking, leaving my options open, as it were. That's um, again, what a fantastic story of just the way Wimbledon. I mean, there's a lot of fans there that remember just you rocketed up the leagues. Like that just doesn't happen now. When you, I'm thinking of like Leeds, for an example, went down. And just, they've been down for a long, long time. And we were saying off air, like, it's really hard to rock it, certainly from the Championship to the Premier League. Yeah. Like, it, what are your well, memories of that? No, it's a lot It's a lot easier then, probably a lot more difficult then. I mean, you can say it's not just you looking at the Championship with, with Leeds trying to get out of it. Uh, you can look at the bottom of that Championship where Barnsley and Luton came up last year from League One 
Yeah. And, not, and they look like coming straight back down. So the golfs, the golfs are getting bigger. But what we had was we had, you know, we, we went, we, we won, we, we went up, promoted the first year, went up, came back down, went up again, up again, got into the old second division. We had one year in the second division and we went into the Premier League. So, you know, in four years time and in that September, we was top of the league. So we had a great, a great belief, um, a great system. I mean, people say we were a long ball, but, you know, you don't, you don't get in that top division by, you know, we had more than that. You know, we had, a, we had some good players. Uh, and we knew what we was doing, and we and and, and we we didn't we, we we weren't scared, we weren't frightened. You can go to places and you see that this is Anfield or the Theatre of Dreams, and sometimes you get intimidated. Well, we we we, we weren't intimidated. In fact, it, we would we wouldn't give anybody respect unless they earn it. So we would go and play these yeah. players. You've seen them on telly, you've seen them on Match of the Day, you've seen them on International, you've seen them playing for England, and until you walked off, then you just go shake your hand and go, no, you, you know you're you know. Now you've got our respect. At that time, we didn't. No one, no one got our respect. They had to earn it, and that was the, that was you know that was the mental, and that was the way we were. Did that work both ways as well? When you were playing with like your Alan Hansons, your Kenny Dalglishes, did you yeah. get that? Did they respect you at the end of a game as well? Well, well funny you say them too, because we we played them in we played them in eighty seven. Played them at Anfield, uh, and our first our first ever visit to Anfield, and we beat them two one. Alan Court scored in the cop, and that actually. I think that might have handed the, the title over to Everton. I'm not quite sure, but the Elvis played. They all played, and the cop actually clapped us off. The cop with the reception the cop gave us after that. So it was a two-way thing. Yeah, I think I think you know they they I think they I think I think the performance you know just deserved that respect. And you know we'd arrived on the big platform. We'd arrived on the big scene. So you know it gave us great confidence, and you uh, know and, and you know it it was it was magnificent. I think everyone liked Wimbledon as well. Obviously, if you talk about 87, the year after, um, they went to win the FA Cup as well, which yeah. I don't believe you were a part of that team. But I think they kind of captured the heart of the nation. Was that right? I mean, forgive me. Was that right? I was a seven-year-old lad at the time. So. Yeah, yeah, no, 100% right. When I left in 87. So uh, we, we actually got to the quarterfinals that year. We played Spurs. And we had, I'm not saying we had a better team, but we had as good a team. And, and, and I'm thinking, yeah. wow, you know, we, we're... Because we, we, we was doing well. One that day, we could beat anybody in the FA Cup. You know, that's that's a, a great recipe. You know, you can get where you, you need to go. So we got beat in the quarterfinals, disappointingly so. And then when Wimbledon when Wimbledon got to the, the cup final, it was no surprise. In fact, I went. Me and Mark Morris, who had, who had both left the club at that time, got on the tube, went in with the fans, and went in and sat Amazing. with them. And that, and that, you know, and, and it was it was it was great. It was great. And again, that didn't surprise us. Surprise everybody else. But it didn't, you know, it didn't surprise me. You know the the, what, the, the attitude, and and I think Vinny's tackle on McMahon in the first minute went it helped as well. If you remember, that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's worth having a look back. Well, we've actually, as it happens, we um, late last year we did an event with Vinny Jones. He was telling us all about. He still has a lot of love for that time and a lot of love for Wimbledon to the point where his um, his FA Cup winning medal is in the um, the AFC Wimbledon yes. Museum, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I still, he's still no, they're all affiliated. I think, I think anyone who's anyone who's been part of Wimbledon, anyone who's been come down, you, you, is, a, is a certain is a certain feel to it, a family feel. Once yeah. you met, even the lone players, the lone players. We had Aaron Ramsdale last year, and he, you know, he 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 bought right into it. And everybody who comes down, it touches you, and and it's such a great feeling and a great club, and and, and they appreciate they appreciate what we you know. We we not got illusions of grandeur. We know what we are. We work men like we 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 get over hurdles we shouldn't get over and we keep surprising people. So my question is then the eighty eight cup final. You're there with the fans. You're watching your your former teammates win the FA Cup and one of the biggest upsets in football history. Um, what was the celebration like and how long did it last? Because oh. I was in Leicester when they won the league and that lasted for about a week. So yeah. like, tell me Wimbledon parted harder than Leicester. Yeah, no, they will. I, I, I listen, I think that time, that time of year when we was playing, that time in our in our lives, and there was a, there was a drinking culture anyway. So I think that would have gone on for ages and ages. There was a game on the Monday night. Uh, we played. They won the cup on the Saturday. Alan Cork had his testimonial on the Monday night. So they, they he was playing on Monday night, and they were, they were still drunk there. So he was all drinking. <laughs> so you know, it was uh, it was a massive drink culture there. And to be fair, you know, that's something you have to celebrate. And then in any any yeah, cup. Leicester, you 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 got us celebrate, huh? Very much so, very much. And which brings me to another question: um, Liverpool winning the Premier League this year for the first time in thirty years. What do you think? What's your thoughts on that? 
uh, phenomenal. I mean, you know, whatever you say, you, you, what the job he's done. I mean, I think if you over the two over the two seasons, I know he narrowly missed out with Man City. They pushed Man City. That was entertaining itself. The head to head last year, but this year Man City haven't been able to stay with them. And uh, and and what he does and how how he works and the, the way they play and how he's got these superstars working their socks off. You know, you've got to take your hat off to these multi-millionaires who are so hungry. And I think the trick is is to keep that hunger once you've won it once. You know, it's uh, it's some teams fall by the wayside, but it'd be interesting to see how they go again. The way the way he is and the way they built that they built a platform they've they've got. You know, you can see them being a a force, and who's going to stop them? Ah, brilliant! No, I've, I've loved it. It's great. Yeah, as, I mean, I don't think we're going to see another era like we saw Man United win back to backs, and we've seen Chelsea do it. I think the Premier League's a lot harder these days. I don't think we're going to see that level of dominance from Liverpool. I think we're going to see. They're just raising the game of everyone else. Like Spurs yeah. are always contending. Oh well, I mean, again, it's who's going to stop them. I mean, if if Manchester City's ban's not overturned, then are they going to attract the top players? The, the top players want to play in the Champions League, so Absolutely. that might be their recruitment. So all of a sudden, they might not. You know, they've got to be really good in their recruitment, and they've got to be clever who they buy. So, will they be a force next year without the Champions League? You know, so it's going to, they're going to take some stopping, and it's going to be it's going to be good watching. Um, I yeah, know, absolutely. But, um, but you know, they, they, they've thrown the gauntlet down and it's up to someone to get in chase them. <laughs> We've had a few questions come in, Glenn. So we're going to just pepper the questions in randomly when they come in. This is from our friends at Tattershall Lakes Holiday Homes. Um, it says, hi, Glenn. Fantastic career. I've got a question regarding Paul Gascoigne. You were at Newcastle during Gaza's last season with the club. What are your memories of him as a young talent at Newcastle? Did you think back then he would go on to be one of the world's best players? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, was, you can just see it already. He was hundred head and shoulders in training. He was his head and shoulders above everybody. Um, and again, he, he, when I when I first got up there, um, he's got one of these. Well, he probably will know. He's, he's um, uh, that personality is where he's. He, he, he has to do if he if it's whatever he does. He has to do it. He was training, and he was going. He was going night fishing in my first pre season. So he wouldn't get any sleep. So he trained pre season was hard enough. Then he go night fishing. Then he go pre season. Wow. And then he go night fishing. So he had these, he had these little things where you know he's uh, trying to think what they call it. You know, with that personality, he's got an intense personality where he just has to keep doing so. And that was my first introduction. And I'm thinking, you can, you can, what are you doing? What are you doing? In fact, he, in fact, he was he was good because there was a few there was a few good young lads there up there at the same time. And uh, while I was I was a London based lad and I moved up to Newcastle, uh, we we had weekends off. But every now and again, I'd tell my wife that we have to do training at the weekend. So. I'd stay up there and, and have a couple of nights out, but he was <laughs> he, he was a, he was an unbelievable talent, a great company, and even when you see him now, addictive personality. Uh, sort of yeah, yeah, even yeah. He, even, even when you see him now, you give him a cuddle, and he he's you, know, you, you got to love him as I think all the whole, whole nation does. He's an all or nothing lad, isn't he? Definitely, uh, like there's no he half was, measures with Gaza. Uh, he was brilliant. Well, you know, he's brilliant. Whatever he's got in his mind, and what he, you know, he, he was tremendous and. You know, just probably ashamed that his injury at Tottenham with his when he done his knee, probably cut short maybe a little bit. But you know, it is uh, that that you know uh, the nineteen ninety World Cup. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that level he was at, brilliant. Joe, that can you believe that on the fourth, which is what three days of time? That's thirty years since his tears. Can you believe that? Thirty, 30 years. years on the fourth of July. Blimey. I know, right? Blimey. Yeah, yeah. It's not that's not good, is it? That's not no, it makes me feel like an old man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are your memories of Newcastle? Because you weren't at Newcastle for very long, were you? What are your memories uh, of um, was, being up there? Yeah, it was good. Cool. I moved up there and, and I couldn't wait because you know, you, you, you'd been up there and uh, and I think you know, when, when someone like Newcastle comes in, I've left yeah. Wimbledon who probably had a fan base. Uh, we, we, we'd be fair, we started off at 2,000, mm -hmm. but by the time we was in, in the top division, we was hitting tens, I think 15,000 was a capacity. So that's what Newcastle were taking to away games. So, uh, mm -hmm. Fans have found a way game, so I'm I'm up there now, in, you know, at, at this place, and it was, you know, it was it was great, it was great. Um, I went up there, didn't didn't have the best preseason, and it was, and I'm not having a go at anybody here, but it was chalk and cheese to what I've been used to. The preseason was wasn't what wasn't what I'd expected, and it wasn't wasn't I didn't think it was that great, and it, it wasn't well, I wasn't fit enough. Felt I needed to get fitter. I felt there was a few things that weren't quite right, and I think maybe the eight years at Wimbledon. You know, it was it was it completely threw me going somewhere else in a different okay. environment. I didn't settle, and, and sometimes it happens. You know, you I have a couple of clubs where you go, you don't really sell. Then you find one, and it's a nice fit. 
and it, and, it, and you go again. So it wasn't it wasn't a great fit. I was, I was prepared to I was prepared to stay and wait and fight and, and have a go, you know. But um, but Watford came in. Uh, Watford came in, and I got offered a way out back to London or close, you know, North London. And uh, and thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll take it. I'll come back because it wasn't wasn't how I envisaged, and, and probably a big regret. But you know, it's it nice to have actually signed from them for only seven games, but didn't really make the impact I wanted. Well, these things happen, I guess, don't you? Like you said, at least you had the foresight to see it rather than just like plow on, as it were. Yeah. Plus, the manager said, "You're not in my you're not in my plans, and you're going to train with the kids." So well, that'll do it as well, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, just on Newcastle, what do you think to the takeover at the moment? Because obviously that's the big talk that has been for the last six months. What do you think to the takeover at Newcastle? Well, I've just, I've just watched them thrash uh, Bournemouth, so I don't think there's too much need doing there. They're in a good position. Was it four one? Was it in the end? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I left it at four 0 so they bought the Bournemouth get a late one. Um, yeah. He, four uh, one last one. You know, Steve Bruce has done a great job, but it's always been the same Newcastle. They've always, you know, you go, you know, you go up. They think they're a sleeping giant. They should be. You know, you, you think of all these investors, these foreign businessmen, which is probably, you know, the Saudis have seen that. You think yeah. there's, there's other clubs you think can actually break into that top six. Newcastle is one. You know, you think at yeah. Leeds, Leeds, you know, there's certain clubs that can do it. And it's been, you know, while while Mike Ashley's done it and had a go and, 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 and had a go and tried to break in, they know they they've obviously it's, it's hard to please them fans. And, and so if there's going to be somebody new coming in, you know, they, but if, if they get it right, then they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Very much so. Very much so. Another question's come in. This is from Jamie Hemmings. So good evening, lads. Glenn, you've played with some great players during your career, including Ryan Giggs, Paul Gascoigne, Mark Hughes and Ian Rush, to name a few. But who is the best player you ever played against and why? Well, I, I get the, I always change, I change my answer. And as I'm doing some research, I change my answer as this goes along. There's always someone and I've been lucky enough to play against some, some real, real good players. You know, playing internationally for uh, for twelve years, you know, against Brazil, Italy, and people like that. It was it was great. But I just want, in fact, it goes to my my Man United team that that uh, was asked to put on earlier. I remember playing yeah. against not, I played playing against Notts Forest right when we first got up into the top division. And Viv Anderson, no, we actually was in the second division. We played him in the cup. And Viv Anderson was playing right back, uh, and and I'm playing left wing, and he kept overlapping and he could run. And I, my, that wasn't really my my forte running. And he kept going and he kept going. I had the most miserable night chasing him. In fact, one bit, I just decided to trip him up. I just tripped him up, but I didn't, couldn't be honest. <laughs> That's it, the right, Wimbledon in your glitch. Yeah, exactly. Then Brian Clough come out and give me one of them, give me the fist. Uh, it was right in front of him. But it was, you know, from that, I'm thinking, you know, we've gone up the levels and we think, oh, you know, you tried and tested, thinking it's not bad, not bad here. Yeah, this is all right. We can cope with this. And all of a sudden, you've got Viv going boom, boom, boom. Yeah. So that, that, from the very early, 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 uh, early part of that top flight thinking wow you know you've got to do some work here to you've got to do a bit more work you know you, you've got to, to keep compete with the levels that he showed and the fitness and the athleticism he had it was magnificent but i mean that team under cluffy was something else wasn't it? like yeah. they took the big great teams in english football like the brian cluff era at forest has to go down as one of the biggest doesn't it well yeah we, we played them in 85 and 86 and we knocked them we knocked them out in the league cup we knocked them out in the fa cup both both two legs well the fa cup three nice. And the and the uh, the old milk cup as well. So and we're playing against that team, you know that that team that he had. And uh, and we we in fact I scored I scored uh, scored against him, scored the winner at home when we knocked him out of the milk cup. So they were tight, you know. We, they it was great. They, that was exactly what I was on about. You 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 know you weren't overawed. You're playing against this team, and most of them won European Cup. And you've got a manager there who's you know who's been lauded and quite rightly. And 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 then there's mm. little old Wimbledon, the Bass Street kids turning up, and you know thinking, oh, what we're we doing on the same same. Same plateau, same, same, you know, same uh, planet as them. Yet we, we we turned them over. So, yeah, it's, it's... so were you were you part of the Wimbledon team then? That um, famously, when Cluffy strutted into the dressing room yeah. to take your ghetto blaster down to yeah. take it off, like were you part yeah. of that? Yeah. What was that yeah. like from that side? Well, the, the ghetto blaster was a good one because uh, the, 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 everyone's got them now. Everyone's got them now. Yeah. And we we started off. We was the first team to do that, and it was that. I take you back to so that Anfield game, that Liverpool when we beat them two one when Dalvis was playing and Rushy and, and Hanson and Lawrence and, and everyone that was playing. And then we we what we did was we stayed up. We went up to North Wales and we stayed uh, stayed in like an army barracks sort of stuff, just doing a bit of training. So when when we stayed up, we had to get the coach to the to the to Anfield. Then the Anfield the coach who took us to Anfield wasn't the coach to take us back. We had our own coach to go back. So we had to take everything off the bus. So everything off the bus. Come into the dressing room, and then there's the ghetto blaster on the side. 
So we won the game, come in, and I don't know who it was, someone pushed play, and that was it. The volume was up, the dressing room was rocking, and I mean, you know, I don't know what the boot room thought of the noise, but you could hear it for miles. And it must have thought that was it. That was the first one thinking, oh, we're having this. So every game after that, we took it in. Now, Brilliant. What, what, I mean, there's a, there's a, the story's the story's been exaggerated a little bit. My memory of it was uh, we had we we got the ghetto blaster in the dressing room. We had an extension lead that was outside. We took it outside the dressing room into the into the electric on the, in the in the in the corridor in, inside the the tunnel. And Brian Clough's come and banged on the door, and told us to turn it down, which. You can imagine that. Imagine the response he got. So, but told to no, no way. Thank you very much, Mister Clough. Away you go. Yeah, you know, in those words. He, yeah, yeah. So he's walked out, and then he's uh, he, he's unplugged the extension in and the extension lead. So we've got he's, he's done this. We've got no music. So the, so we've got no no the low, low electricity. So we sent the kit man out over to the garage to get the big massive batteries, <laughs> and, then we, <laughs> and we got it up even louder. And he couldn't get hold of the batteries because the door was shut. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but he did try and get it turned off, but luckily it took the battery and, uh, you know, we overcome that. But there is things that I think that I think they've been exaggerated. He picked it up and threw it in a bath or did this and that. It was, it was just purely the electric and the battery and we, uh, we solved that problem. Oh, man. Well, I mean, we do love a good Brian Clough story here, to be honest yeah. with you. Like, what, what absolute legend. Like, we asked um, Mark Crossley, like, how would yeah. Brian Clough handle social media and how would he handle the world of social media? And it... It fascinates me to this day, him, like with Facebook. I think he'd be he'd be in charge of the country by now. Yeah, I, I wouldn't worry too much about Facebook. I'd want to see him, I want to see him in the punditry. I'd like to see him in the Sky Studio. I would love to see him with Roy Keane or Gary Neville. I'd love to Ooh. see him with them. because he would tie people up in knots. And and you know, he was it was a must watch. You know, I mean I'll go through and look at all the old YouTube stuff or some of his interviews. And they're absolutely yeah. Yeah, they're brilliant. And you know, it just—it's it, made for him now. It's tailor-made for his personality. Yeah. He would, he, you know, he would be brilliant. And uh, and I went. Like, I mean, my career—I was fortunate enough to play for Derby and Forest. And I went to Derby with Darren Wassell and Steve Sutton, and they was at Forest with with uh, Brian Clough, and their stories were magnificent. Then I ended up at Forest, and I was at in '98. So Crossley, uh, Wild, Stoney, uh, Chettle, all of them, and then they tell me some other stories. So I've got quite a collection, quite a good collection of stories. Uh, and, Go on you know, then. Which is your no, favourite? No, 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 Come no, on. That one. I might. I might. I might give you one a little bit later. But it, it's, all right, mate. All right. It was. It was unbelievable. Some of the stuff. Some of the stuff that he did. I'm quite liking the idea of um, Cluffy and Roy Keane locking horns on TV because I can't imagine either of them giving an inch. I can't imagine no. one of them like, admitting no, defeat. I think he's brilliant, though, Roy Keane on the television. I think he's. Oh, he's amazing. amazing. He's brilliant, and what he says, and how he talks, he, you know, he sees, he cares, and uh, and 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 and, he, and that's probably what kept him, you know, no disrespect, a great footballer, but not as gifted as some of the others. But his attitude and his drive kept him up there. And and again, it's like it's like the Liverpool one; they've won it once, have they got the, you know, they got the drive to win it again? Are they in that comfort zone? Man United, when Keane was there that year with Ferguson, then years with Skulls, Giggs, and they were relentless, and they just kept churning out titles and titles and titles. So you take your hat off to people like that, you know. You got to remind. Yeah, them. I mean, that's you a guy that, that's a born. You can, see that, you can see that in his personality now on the TV. He comes across exactly. He's going to punch the gay the other day, wasn't he? You know. <laughs> oh, well, when he said he wouldn't let him watch. back on the bus to go back to yeah. Manchester. Yeah, no, he's a good watch. He's a good watch. Yeah, he is. We're um, superstar speakers. We've got the exclusive. We've got five dates with him across the UK and Ireland coming up at the end of the year. So we. And it's like no cameras, so we're really looking forward to just seeing what he's going to say in a live Q and A session, which uh, is a box some, office. Isn't... Some of them like the touch paper, and he'll go, won't he? You want to, you want yeah, hundred percent. He'll just go up on one. Brilliant. I might be the one that do it. I might just like nudge the bear a little bit. Yeah. Maybe on the last day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, another another um, name that Jamie mentioned in his question was Ryan Giggs, who yeah. is now the manager of the Welsh national team. Um, yeah. What challenges do you? Because obviously you were the assistant coach, assistant yeah, assistant coach in Wales. Um, what challenges are there in international management that you just don't get at club level? And how do you feel Giggs is going to do in the Euros next year? Yeah, well, actually, I was the twenty ones. I was the twenty ones uh, manager with Mark, with Mark Hughes as the manager with, with Mark Bannard in his wiki. So uh, I mean, what it was, I, I just left Barnsley for three years at Barnsley on full time. I just got, I just, I just finished playing. So. Uh, relatively young, forty years old, just finished playing. So uh, when when you're day to day, it was great. When when you went and international, um, it can be frustrating because you you're not you can't really control their fitness. 
You can't control yeah. what they do day to day. So when they come, when they come with you for that ten days or then two games, then ten days, all you all you got to do is get your, get. Te- you can't improve their technique because you've not got them long enough. So you've just got to tactically get them ready for the game. So you're doing the tactical side of it. Uh, you're doing the set pieces side of it. You never actually get to. You know, my, my players now, we're going to give my players, my players at Wimbledon, we're going to give them learning objectives. So we're going to give them three things to improve on. You, you know, even if you're 28, 29, 30, you can still improve. So when, you, when, mm-hmm. you, when you're an international manager, you don't ever get to do that. You're just purely, you know, uh, playing the game, get them organised to play the game technical, get the set pieces right. Then you're nursing them to the next one. You just got a like, little nice and light, but get it right again. And you got, then they clear off again. So, you know, you have a bit of time off. You can go and watch them. You can go, but you can never really get into the nitty gritty and the day to day stuff that you know you do miss it. And it's it's um, it was a, it was an eye opener. I enjoyed it, but I was probably uh, probably twenty years too early for me. I think sixty sixty five. I think it's not a bad job part time. Would you do it again? Yeah, well, you can't. Oh, yeah, yeah. To, turn, to to work at international level. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hundred percent. A great opportunity. And, you know, forever thankful for doing it. You know, it wasn't that long because Mark left to go to Blackburn and then John Toshet came in and I, I'd like to have carried on, but uh, it wasn't to be. But, you know, but to, to take the opportunity down, I was actually, the story, this is, the, 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 I was going to America. I had a job in America. I was going to LA, Pasadena. And right. to get into LA, I was taking a family, sold my house, did everything. And to get into LA, America, I, because I played international football, you can get an O visa. To get this special O visa, I had to get a, a written reference from the English FA, which uh, I had. Uh, the Irish FA was Laurie Sanchez, who I played with, was OK. Scottish FA, I had a fellow called Billy Kirkwood, who coached me in, in, uh, in Hong Kong, which was great. And, I was, and then I rung Mark, I rung Mark Huser. I said, Mark, look, I, I need this. I need, a, I need a reference to get this visa. So he said, oh, I'm trying to ring you. I said, why? He said, I'm going to offer you the 21s. So I said, well, I can't. I'm going to pass it. I've, I've been over there. I've found a house. I've got schools. The kids are coming up. And I was a bit torn anyway. I just, I put the phone down and said I couldn't do it. Rung him back two minutes later and said, tell me a bit more about the job. Anyway, then I phoned the boy up and said, we ain't going, we're staying here. And it was, it was, in, it was a great decision and, and I've loved every minute of it. And also after that, Mark took me to Blackburn, uh, took me to Man City. We, we went together at Fulham, then QPR, then Stoke. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, been a, it's been a good work, good colleague, good friendship. And uh, just from probably turning that Pasadena LA job down. But my girls had, Disappointed because they think they'd have been living next door to the Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a big difference between LA and Wales, isn't there, mate? To be exactly. fair, exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, but these are the choices you make, and it's a decision that, again, you just think at the time, you know, you, you do it and, it, and it's worked out really well for me. So, another good decision. Although, I wouldn't mind a bit of sun, I wouldn't mind LA. I was, I was like to tell you. Yeah, you don't get much sun in Wales either, mate. But no, you're absolutely right. You've, ca- you've carved a, um, a fantastic career as a respected manager um, in your game. Um, it brings me to Mark Hughes, obviously a great Manchester United legend. What lessons did you learn from Sparky that's influenced your managing career? Well, the first, the first thing, the first thing that, that, that stuck in mind was when I went with the twenty ones, and, and he, he was with the, he was obviously the, the national team manager, and I was getting players, you know, play, players from all over. We'd be Arsenal, we had Arsenal players. I had a lad from Bayern Munich come across. I had, and he just said, "We want, I want the work. I don't want them because they might, you know, you, you might get a lad from. Oh, I think I had, a, I had the, the Welsh league, a Welsh league player, uh, and he said the same. Work, I don't want the Welsh league player." Or the Arsenal players, it's got to be, it's got to be the, the, the work has got to be exactly what they get at Arsenal. The work they do, the training, the practices, and the organisation, the way we look after them, the hotels, the travel, it's got to be like that. So that was the first yeah. thing he said. So whatever you, whatever we do, you know, they don't, they, they want to, I want them to come, want to turn up. It's got to be that good because you might get young boy goes, oh, I'm not going there, that's crap. You know, I'm, I, you know, I don't want to play with the 21s. I'm at Arsenal, or I'm at Man U, or I'm at Liverpool. You know, it's no good because I'm playing with these players. That, he said, I want them to enjoy it. I want the level of work to be at a level where they don't know. There's no joy. In it. There's no joy. And it. it's just what they're getting every day. And that was the first thing he said. And, and, and when he told me that, that, that stuck with me all the way through the jobs wherever we went. That stuck with me thinking, Do you know what? That's a great that's a great little bit of advice yeah. straight away. So that's the very first thing he told me. And that probably still sticks with me in the, in the most relevant and, and poignant, really. That's great. We've had a, um, a chap called Kieran Davis has messaged in, which is not really a question, but more of a compliment. He said, you were one of the most skillful, underrated players to ever play for Watford. Like, when you see, like, fans who compliment you like that and you've played a big part in their lives and their football, how does that make you feel? Man, I'm that pleased. must be I'm wonderful. Pleased. I'm pleased. I mean, it's, it's great. I mean, I had two and a half years there, um, but I'm yeah. probably 
probably more known for the Wimbledon and Sheffield United had five years yes. and eight years at Wimbledon. So, so probably the Watford one's gone under the radar a little bit by two and a half years there. Uh, and and loved every minute of it. You know, we had a good side. We got beat in the playoffs to get promotion one year. With Steve Harrison was the manager. You know, it was it was it was a good club. Again, it was it was a club that thought big. Really, it was one of them ones that was in between the the, the, the first division or Premier and the Championship, as probably yeah. West Brom is now. Is one of them. But you know, it was it, I loved every minute of it, and and the crowd was good. And uh, I played some of the best football there. I, I really did. And I, 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 I did I did all right there. And the chairman was good. Was that the Elton John era? Was yeah, that the Elton John era when he was in charge? He, he was brilliant. He was brilliant. He, yeah? He, uh, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. He was brilliant. Because he, 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 Dave Bassett took me then. Dave Bassett was the woman manager took me to Watford. And the Christmas, Dave Bassett got the sack. So um, I'm, I'm in the dressing room and, and Elton John walks in and says to me, Glenn, after... after I bet he did. Huh? I bet he did. Right? No, seriously. Seriously. He says, come, <laughs> come and see me after. I went, OK. So I knocked on the ballroom and I says... I said, I said, what do you want? I said, the, the chairman wanted to see me. And he saw me and he said, yeah, Glenn, come in. He said, come in, bring that bottle of pink champagne over. Come and sit in the corner. Me and him drank a bottle of pink champagne. And all he was concerned about was he was devastated that he had to sack Dave Bassett. And he thought that he didn't want me to go. And he didn't. He, he just really felt that, you know, he, he thought that, you know, he just wanted to make sure that I was good and I was happy. And I was. And he was, he was phenomenal. He was phenomenal. You know, he didn't have to do that, but he went out of his way. Uh, it went out of his way to do that, and, and it was the champagne was was very nice, very nice. I bet it was. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's, what a fantastic story! What a fantastic yeah. thing! Brilliant. Uh, Malk Hall has been on. Malk is our resident Leeds fan. Um, he said, "Who would you rate higher, Messi, Ronaldo, or Pele and Maradona?" So, what, obviously, I think what Malk's trying to get at is the the Messi Ronaldo debate, and then right. Pele versus Maradona. So. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm a lefty, so Messi all day long. Uh, Messi over Ronaldo and Maradona over Pele. Um, again, I, again, I don't remember Pele. Obviously, you see the you see the footage, you see bits and pieces. But I remember Maradona winning the cup for Argentina single-handedly. And I don't mean that as a pun with the hand of God, but he, he did. <laughs> and he, you know, and, and and some of the football we played. And there's a couple of documentaries I've seen. There's a couple of documentaries on his time in Italy. And it's time, and, and in fact, there's a video, there's a videos of him now, which, which is a bit sad. But um, as a player, Maradona, I absolutely loved him. And when I was when I was uh, first in coach at Fulham, I used to sit in the stand for the first for the first half. And Mark Hughes and the staff would be down the bottom, and I'd make my notes. And I'm in I'm in the stand in in the front of the director's box, and all of a sudden there was a kerfuffle, and in walks Maradona, and he's he, 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 Maradona walks past, his wife walks past, and he sits next to me in the director's box. Now I want to. I'm working, but I want to shake his hand, and it's live on the telly. So I'm thinking, I can't shake his hand because if the camera's on me, the time I'm shaking that, oh, they're going to say to me, "What are you doing?" So I signing sat, Maradona for Fulham for 45 minutes, and they, and I never. I just nodded, and I never even shook his hand to say, oh, "What a play!" I, I couldn't do it because I, th- I knew the camera might have been on me because it's yeah, Maradona, they're not on me. They're on Maradona, and they've got this idiot beside him, want to get high five and a cuddle and bits and pieces. <laughs> So I do regret, I should have just done it and gone balls. Like, well, yeah, right, yeah. what a player you are. So I've sat next to him, didn't speak to him, didn't touch him, never even made eye contact. But Maradona and, and Messi and Messi. That, that, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, I was, what question was I going to ask? You? Yeah, um, going back to what we were saying before, um, the Euros, how do you think Wales are going to do? Because obviously you played for Wales in your time. How do you think Wales are going to do in the Euros? No, I think, oh, listen, they, they, again, it's like, it's, it's a bit like, oh, look at uh, Wales as like a Wimbledon side, but I think they, on their day, they can beat anybody. You know, they've got top, yeah. top players, outfit, you know, they keep Bale, they've got Ramsey. They can, they can beat anyone on their day, and they've got a good system. I think the system that uh, that Chris Coleman put in place, now obviously Ryan's coming, Giggs is coming and done it again and tweaked it a little bit, but you keep, you, you keep your best players on the park, you keep your best players fit, they can beat anybody at any time. So that that like that they they they're dangerous. Not many people want to play them. No, that's true. That's absolutely true. Um, how do you think then, as a manager, obviously the delay because they were all prepped for this summer, and obviously now that's been pushed back a year. How does that affect a manager? Like from your point of view, what difficulties does that bring up? Well, the, the only difficulties I can see is I can see is if there's if you know it might be one or two of the older ones who might not make might have been their last one you know you think coming I'll get another year out of you now is that what yeah. is that going to be now that that certain player might not play as much this this next season coming up so does that take them out the high the good side of it is there might be an upper come up and coming one that goes actually he's done brilliant this kid's done brilliant 
Brooks at Bournemouth. He's been injured. Now he's fit. Yes. So Brooks, but Brooks will now, after this season, he could be a top, top player at that, at that tournament. So it's, you know, it's catch 22. You might miss the experienced one, but there's always surprises and there's always one or two that come from nowhere. And it'll be a big season and, yeah, all right, put it off a year, but, you know, it doesn't matter. They're qualified. It's there. You know, if they've got to wait, we've got to wait. You know, just bring it on. Yeah. Um, and of course, England being in there as well. You might see another Wales doing England over again, which. Yeah. And yeah. that happened in the last yeah. tournament, didn't it? Uh, Did that happen? I thought, I thought, no, England, England won, didn't they? We went 1 0 up. Is it the way around? No, that, that might be the one game England won, actually. Forgive me. Yeah, that was it's, it's been a long day, Glenn. But I was in Spain and I, I went one nil up and I went into some neighbours shouting and screaming and then at half time and then at the end I, I had to go and eat humble pie because we got beat so uh, celebrate a little <laughs> bit too early but um, now you but it is and that was a one off but the, the performance and the way they the way they they played in that tournament was magnificent and you know hopefully more to come. Good, good, good. So we were then just before um, we went on air. You, we, we did ask you to give us a Manchester United um, dream team, and you were telling us a little bit about how you got to play Man United. Who actually did make your dream team? Well, I mean, I, was, I looked, I looked at it and thinking, you know, you, you can go back to the '68, you can go to '68 European Cup team. You know, your Charlton's, your best, your Laws. I mean, I yeah. did see a little bit of George Best growing up. I think my one, my one abiding memory was when he was at Fulham with. Rodney Marsh and they tackled each other. I think they were playing Bournemouth and the game was going on and they actually tried to tackle each other you know, on the same side, which was bizarre, <laughs> but great entertainment. But I, 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 what I want to do, I wanted to go back and think about the, the team I played against. Uh, the team yeah. I've gone through, my, my team ranges from 1986 until 1998, 99, the treble winning team. I was, I say, lucky enough to play against him. It wasn't like it wasn't, it wasn't a good experience, but I, I did play against that team. But um, you know, I think the first time, the first time Wimbledon played Man United was uh, was in November '86, and so Alex Ferguson had got the job on the sixth, and we played him on the twenty-sixth. And they come down to Plough Lane, and uh, we had a corner at the home end, and I put I, I hit a great ball in, as I've got to say, and Billy Jones come in and, and nodded it in, and we beat them one 0 um, So uh, that was our first ever. Was Clayton Blackmore playing then? Uh, no, I don't think he was. Eh? Probably still a baby. Then. He was a bit younger than me, Clayton. Well, he looks older than me, but he is actually younger. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so that was. So there's a few from that team, and there's a few. And, and again, I mean, we go from the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper was uh, uh, Peter Schmeichel. I think when, when I was at Sheffield United in the early '90s, we seemed to draw Man United quite a lot. Um, and uh, we played them. I think the first ever Premier League game we played them, and we beat them two one. And Brian Dean scored his first, the first ever. Premier League goal we scored against mm -hmm. Man United, which he's got, and I'm actually the first man to celebrate the first goal because if you see when he scores, I'm the first one there, so I've got that one. That's uh, cool. But, but yeah, when we played him in '93, we played him in the sixth, fifth round of the FA Cup live on the television, and Ryan Giggs played, scored the first goal, and then we'd equalised, and then I scored the winner, Lob Schmeichel. So uh, Lob Schmeichel. So uh, that was that was probably one of my finest goals, especially being live on BBC at that time. That you know the the the, 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 you know, the, the, what do you call it? The attendance or the, you know, the viewers. Was yeah, massive. The viewership. So, yeah, massive. So, um, that was... Well, no one lobbed Schmeichel, did they? Not, I, mean, I think it was only you oh, and Philippe so, Albert. Not yeah, many people did it. He, well, he, he, he sort of came out, you know, he comes out and spreads and how many times he hits his nose in his face. So I just lobbed it. He spread and I just lobbed it over him. In fact, when I, in fact, just going on about Peter Schmeichel, I went to, I played, at, I worked at Man City under Mark Hughes and, and Casper was a young goalkeeper coming up. And uh, Kevin Hitchcock had the goalkeepers. There was Joe Hart, there was um, Shay Given, and there was Casper. And every then they'd do some shooting practice. So one day I went over there and had a shot, and Casper was in goal, and I scored past Casper. So I said to Casper, I said, Not only have I scored against you, I've scored against your dad. I said, Any more Schmeichel's going to put a pair of gloves on? Bring them all down. I said, I'm going to beat the whole family. <laughs> the whole family. I said, You're not going to go. You're not going to go, and I will still beat you. So I've knocked two <laughs> past two Schmeichels. I don't know if there's any more out there. I'm getting a bit old, but I'll have a go. Yeah, maybe Casper's mum. Casper's uh, mum. They say that as your mum any good in goal. Yeah. <laughs> he was a great. He was a great kid. He was a great kid. But no, that was that was a that was it. I'm just going on purely on the memories on the memories that that you know that perfect. Played, yeah. Playing against Cantona, you know, and he he did that chip in the wind. You see it when he stands there with his arms on his sticks his chest out. And I was in that game. I think he got one of our players sent off again. So a nap. So there's there's some good memories, and I just tried to. I tried to just pick a team from that. I think the one, the one standout player that, that I've got to mention was I was I was um, 
I was injured and I'd just come back and I, I was on playing a reserve game. I was only going to have probably an hour, 45 minutes. I was playing on a Saturday. And we're playing Man United. This, that's when Sheffield United was playing it. We used to play at Saltergate, Chesterfield ground. And then the referee's come in. He's come in. Uh, his kickoff at 7.30. He's come in at 10 past 7 and said, we've, we've got to delay the kickoff. I said, why is that? He said, because the crowd aren't all in. I went, it's a reserve game. I said, it's a punting reserve game. Who's going to come? He said, well, you'll be surprised. There's quite a few, you know, there's quite a few here. So it actually, there was quite a few, quite a few. I thought they'd come to watch me. Anyway, they've come to watch Man United. So there's a young kid in midfield and he's, he's absolutely out. He's out of this world. I'm thinking, who is this kid? He, he, uh, normally you can get through these games and play at 50% and come through one skate. I had to play. He was embarrassing me. I had to play at 100% to get anywhere near him. And his name was Paul Scholes. And um, to this day, oh, yeah. uh, he was a young kid. And I'm like, wow. Wow, what a player! What a player! And that was it. Yeah, that was that was then. So you know, he went on. Obviously, he's he's captain of my team. But he was an absolutely at that age. He, you know, he was magnificent, magnificent. Where do you stand on the debate then with Skulls, Gerard, or Lampard? Like, where do you stand with the debate with those three? Well, like, there's no debate, is there? There's, there's only one. There's only Skulls. Only Skulls. Simple Skulls. as that. Oh yeah, yeah, Skulls all day. Long. Oh, what about this one then? Skulls or Gaza? Because you got to play with them both. Like. Well, like I'd find a little, I'd, 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 I'd find a little position. Oh, I'd play them both. It's just all that attack. It don't matter. I'd play them both. <laughs> yes. There's a skull. Gaza, Gaza, um, Gaza was, well, well no, I'd still go for skulls. Yeah. I think more because, of a brain. Yeah, because he's more consistent. You know, you're looking at Gaza, you know, he came and he went and he was a bit hit and miss and he was up and down. He went a bit and he went, but skulls was just a bit like Roy King. That, you know, it was like boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom. We just kept going, kept going. And again, you probably count on the, you count on their achievements, or you count on what the medals they got in their in their thing. So you know, relentless goals, brilliant. Nice, nice. So who else have we got then? We've got a couple there. Oh, look, here's another one coming, just quickly, Glenn. Uh, your all-time favourite player for the Blades from Daniel Keeney. So it'd be remiss of me not to say that. My all-time favourite player for the Blades when I was there was Brian Dean. Brian Dean. He, Brian Dean. Brian Dean, he, well, I mentioned him already when he scored the first goal in the Premier League uh, against him, but he, he would score us. You know, we, 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 was, we, was, we were fighting for our lives and he would get 20 goals a season and we'd stay up. To be fair, we, we stayed up quite comfortably. So we would, we, we would get up and out, out and about and we'd enjoy our season. The minute we sold him, uh, we couldn't replace his 20 goals and, uh, and we got relegated. So he... You know, not saying he single-handedly kept us up, but, you know, he, we, we did have a, a way of playing and, and there was a lot of chances created for him and he would finish him. But, you know, once once he left when I was there, once he left that club, it was a big void to fill. Now, we did try to sign one or two to, to, to get them 20 goals. But if you're, you're in a relegation fight, you lose 20 goals, then that's too much to, to take. You're going down, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and I think... I think it was just after probably the roundabout that, you know, when we got to the semi final in 93, and it, you know, perhaps we should have invested a little bit more. We had, you know, we've been in the league, we've been in the league for three or four years, five years in that Premier League. And it's, you know, I think it, it was a chance to kick on. And instead of selling, we should have maybe improved and strengthened. But, you know, it, we, we did and, and we paid the price. So, Brian, Brian Dean. And he probably agrees. He probably agrees if he's a blade. What's um? What do you think is Sheffield United at the moment? Because they've come out of lockdown and they're really struggling, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They are. They are. They're, but I, I mean, before lockdown, well, I, I, I saw them play. Before lockdown, they yeah. were not everybody. You know but what they've done and how he's how he's worked, the work that they do, um, and you know, you, you like you know, making that step up from the Premier League. We already spoke about the big goal from the Championship, and but they've gone and they breezed it. They breezed it. Yeah, it's yeah. probably go again. To go again is a big ask. Um, to go again is a big ask, and it's, it's you know it's it's it's, it's not been ideal with it with a thing, and they may miss out on that on, on Europe. I don't know, but you know whatever happens, you know you got to take your off to Chrissy Wilder and all the players, and they've yeah. done brilliant. And I hope it long may continue because that's I love that club. That's a great club, and the fans are magnificent. Stain is magnificent, and and they deserve a team in the Premier League. Well, Wilder, to be honest with you, I know Klopp will get it, but Wilder to me has been manager of the season. Like I think he's Premier League Manager of the Year. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, I thought it'd be interesting. I mean, you know, it's always about budget, so you know. It, yeah. It, I mean, to be fair, Burnley are up there now as well. Burnley are up there. Watford are up there. So they're the ones. I mean, you know, the 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 Kloppers, Klopp's brilliant, mm. and uh, to to do what he's done, the way they play, the manner he does, and and probably they've won it, won it at Kenta with so many games to go. So he's he's obviously going to get it, and it's always the way. But 
you know, there's some there's some you know, there's, there's some top managers there, and you know, yeah. like two, two I mentioned, Chrissy and uh, and Dyche, they're, they're they're English, so it's great that they're up there, and hopefully, they're, well, Dyche is from Catron, like me, isn't he? Sean well, Dyche is a Catron boy. Is he? Yeah. Well, he's done a brilliant job. I mean, I've been reading the, I'm reading that they, you know, they might be his last season. I've been reading this a bit, not, not all good there, but. You know what a job he's done, and if they, you yeah. know, he's he's come back there winning, and you know, he's, you know, hopefully they they get an opportunity. I hope so. All right. So anyway, let's go back to you. Two. Where were we? We had Schmeichel, we've had Scholes, we've had Law, Charlton, yeah, Best. No, I didn't, we I put in defence. I didn't put I didn't put Law, Charlton, and Best. Best. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. Them. Sorry. I beg your pardon. No, I just wanted to go on. I just wanted to go on who who um, who I basically played against. So I mentioned Viv Anderson. He got in. Yeah. Uh, yes. Viv Trey didn't like chasing him. He was like him and whip it up and down the wing. Uh, Paul McGrath and Yapstam uh, were, 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 were a big two. Uh, Dennis Irwin, again, under the radar, but what a player. He, he, he is a Mr. Consistent, seven and a half, eight out of ten. He reminds me of Nigel Winterburn at Arsenal, where I played with. You know, we, we, that was always probably first on the team sheet because you know what he's going to get. Uh, Skulls, Robson and Keane. Uh, Robson. Nice. Played to himself, top, top, top three midfield players, and I went for Cantona, Hughes, and Giggs. That was my, that was, and I put Clayton Blackmore sub. He wasn't happy about it, but he's sub. But I said to him, <laughs> he, 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 he got to help the kit man do the kit. Yeah, absolutely. You can bring the bucket of oranges on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bless him. And yeah, you had to put um, what you could. You had to put. Um, so beg your pardon, you had to put Mark Hughes in, didn't you? Obviously, you'd never hear the end of it, you didn't put him in, yeah. But, but yeah, well, I was I was looking and, and you're looking at Andy Cohen at you know, the goals he scored, and yeah, and even Van Nistel, right? what a goal scorer he was. But I keep thinking about how many how many big goals Mark Hughes scored for that club. Yeah. You know, you go back to the Cup Winners Cup pass when he, he smashed that one in against Barcelona, I think it was, and then even even the semi final against Oldham when he they go in, uh, they go Oldham are going to the Cup final, Man United are out, and he, he smashed one in the top corner, so he's he just scored. When he scored, his goals were, were unbelievable. You know, volleys, top corners, they were, they were spectacular goals. And they yeah. always come at the right time. So, uh, yeah, and, and plus, plus his, his employment for the last 20 years. So, yeah, <laughs> all, all, he's ca- in fact, Skulls ain't captain, he's captain. Skulls is vice captain. <laughs> old school forward as well. Like, old school, big, tough, strong. You couldn't get the ball like, off him, could you? No, I like that. That's, you know, it's, it's not that anymore. It's just no, you know, it's, 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 the game's changed a little bit. It's, it's, the yeah, game's very much. Changed. No, there's no old fashioned one there. He's not that physical. I mean, you see Andy Carroll gets more free kicks against him than he does for, yeah. and he's not doing anything. It's just people. That's because his legs are made of glass. Yeah, they just hit him and they go down, they scream and they get free kicks. So, then, you know, them old days when they used to be a big strong one, t- taking a hit, giving as good as they get. You know, that was, that was the battle, and it's then them days are gone. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it, the game's changed. It's a lot faster and a lot, lot, lot yeah. cuter, I suppose. I don't know. I think it's it's a visual thing now, isn't it? Like it's more entertaining to watch when it's not as brutal. I personally, I think I'd rather watch a European like fifty fifty. You don't get fifty fifties anymore. Uh, nah, there's not there's so. there's when, when butcher, the butcher's head and people's head, and there's cuts, and they come back. Well, you don't see too many of them anymore. Uh, you don't see, you know, you, you, a lot of people. A lot. Of, you don't see too many. I mean, years ago they'd strap their they'd strap their ankle around their boot and they'd come on. You don't see that anymore. They'd come on with. Bandages around their knees. You don't see that in the money. It's, it's just a. It's a different. I think now it's completely different. I think. You, I think it has to be because you're so athletic now. The Premier League. The demands are so so athletic. They've got to do. They've got to do twelve to fourteen k. They've got to do. Yeah. You know, do hundred meters in in ten seconds. They've got to do. They've got to do all these all, all these numbers. So you can't. It's hard when you've got a dead leg or you're carrying something on that. So I suppose you know you. They now they've got to you know they've got to be right. They're like thoroughbreds now. Absolutely, absolutely. He's like, you are seeing that era of like that drinking culture we were talking about, and that that partying culture of footballers and steak and chips for a game is just yeah. it's a thing of the past, isn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah. They were good times though. I used to like steak and no, chips. No, it's not all right. I know. I prefer. Yeah, like, I mean, Liverpool looked like they had a good party, and you know, you do pick and choose. You pick and choose your times. You know, there are. You know, it's like you know, you, you, there's lots of sacrifices, but they're worthwhile. Obviously, with the, the financial gains and and and, and the accolades, and as it were, so. You do pick your times. I'm sure that uh, you know they'll they'll carry on partying in the summer when it's uh, they've got plenty of time off. But they know they are they are fit, they're athletes, and and uh, and they know their bodies now. So it's there's a lot more technology goes through it as well. They know their body fats. They know what they know everything about it. The hydration. You know, I'd, I'd like to I'd like to have played when I this sort of coverage and this sort of thing. This is knowing your body and this is what you have got to do and this is where you're at and this is where it is. It's mm-hmm. it's more scientific and. 
And uh, well, we did, we didn't have that, but you know, I'm not I'm not knocking when I played. I, lo I loved every minute of it. It was a great era. Does that filter down to like AFC Wimbledon though? Like yeah. that scientific level and that yeah. that completely different style. Does that filter down to the Wimbledons of this world and in your league as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have all the GPS. We've got GPS. We do the hydration tests. We've got you know we do everything we can. We do we, you know we've got the uh, we, as again, they've been on Strava. We've done Strava, they've been out on their bike, so we're trying to control everything they do. And we get, cool. we know, we know, we know, we get, we know what, how hard they've worked, you know, when they need a rest, you know, with numbers, we give them targets to hit or when a collective number of kilometers per for the team output individually, they'll get, you know, they've got a sprint so many times, they get, they, you know, they'll get their distance as well in that. So, you know, we, we absolutely, yeah, you, you, it's, it's, uh, it gives you an edge and. Everyone's at it, so you know you just got to be better at it. And 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 now the athletes, are, the athletes are key, so they know they've got to look after themselves. So yeah, we we we, we try as as much as we can. I mean, it's, yeah, I think financially it's it's more difficult. Um, I up in the Premier League, they've probably got. I think I think there's one club's got a, a sports scientist for the goalkeeper. So um, you know that's that's uh, not only got a goalie coach, they've got a sports scientist for the goalie coach to monitor their training load. So you know that's that's how it's going and. Um, and, you know, we, we can't afford that, but we do what we can. Good. Uh, we're coming up to the end of the interview, Glyn. Uh, it's been absolutely fantastic. Daniel Keeney has um, just been on again. He says, Glyn was my favourite. He's right about Dino, but Glyn's left foot was magical. I've just put a picture up of him in my bar, lobbing <laughs> Schmeichel at Bramall Lane. Like, if ever there was a testament to your career, your picture of you lobbing Schmeichel is up in a bar. Like, well, Daniel, 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 I'm waiting for an invite. I'll have a drink at that bar and we'll have a toast that picture. So get me an invite. I'll come round. No, it's brilliant. That's there you brilliant. go, Daniel. I said the, the fans at Bremel Lane, really appreciative. And, and you know, and, and it's even when you go back now and, 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 the, and the football, they like I say, I love the place. And I've stayed up here. I've, I'm, I'm stayed up north. I'm a con I'm converted northerner, as you can tell by my accent. It's a cross between yeah. northern and Welsh. Um, so, you know, I've, I've loved every minute of it. So, you know, it's, it's 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 great, and I appreciate I appreciate what he said. Thank you. There you go. So there, that's the plan. I think that's a great place to end the interview. We've just in an hour. We're going to go Daniel's bar for a pint. Glenn's going to sign the picture. We'll all have a drink. Um, obviously when lockdown's over. <laughs> but Glenn Hodges, thank you so much for joining us here tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure, um, ladies and gentlemen. It belongs to Glenn. No, no problem. Thank you very much. Stay safe. We're all back to normal soon, and the fans are back watching football as it should be. Take care.